everyone. My name is Evie Lupine and welcome back to my channel today. I want to talk about a massive but often misunderstood area of BDSM, discipline. What does the D in BDSM really mean anyway? And how can understanding it help us create better scenes and better relationships? Let's talk about it. I think it's worth saying, first of all, that the D in BDSM actually stands for two things. In case you haven't heard it before, BDSM includes bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, and sadism and masochism. Most people are quick to identify dominance with the D, even if they aren't that familiar with kink. But discipline often gets left out of the equation. To understand why this happens, it's worth recounting a bit of kink community history. So, what we call BDSM was not always referred to as such. This is actually a relatively recent invention. Instead, we had separate terms in different groups. We had B&D, we had DS, and we had SM or SNM. Yes, like the Rihanna song. There was always a degree of overlap between these groups, particularly with a common interest in power exchange, or DS. Basically, some people were really into the hitty stuff, and some people were really into the bondage type stuff. Eventually, all of these groups merged into what we would now call the kink community. In that process, though, some of the more distinct aspects of each group were lost, and I see this in particular with dominance and submission and with discipline. Think about it now. If you had to define what discipline is, what would you say? What kind of scene would you picture? Most people, I imagine, will think of one of two things. The first thing a lot of people will think of would be a very super traditional corporal punishment scene complete with a pencil skirt and a cane and somebody with a thick German accent or possibly an English school marm. The second would be a dominant enforcing the standards of behavior for their submissive. Something like position training maybe or giving them a thick three-ring binder meant to serve as a guide for how to act in every potential situation. But neither of these scenarios shows what discipline is in isolation. It shows it in practice in combination with other things. It pairs it with sadomasochism, and the other one pairs it with dominance and submission. This is something you actually see reinforced in common definitions used in blog posts and in articles on this subject. They'll usually say something like, quote, Discipline is the act of ensuring an action is done or a task completed, typically through the enactment of punishment within a DS power dynamic. Or, quote, Discipline refers to the practice of training a submissive to obey a dominant and follow certain rules. Or, quote, discipline describes the use of rules and punishment to control overt behavior in BDSM. As you might have been able to notice, each definition intrinsically links discipline to power exchange and often to pain as well. It doesn't actually exist on its own, at least not here. But I want to go back a little farther. I want to know what discipline is on its own, without the context power exchange or pain may give it. And for this purpose, we can think about discipline from a few different angles. For one, while I was researching for this video, I found an article on a website called Deviance and Desire, which gives one good starting place. It refers to discipline as being something that occurs when one person takes control of aspects of another person's behavior. And I don't generally like citing Google definitions, but I actually really like what Google has to say here because it gives us several different use cases that nest together for the term discipline. 
Discipline is a set of rules of conduct. Discipline is the act of training someone to obey. Discipline is the act of punishing someone for an offense. And it's also training oneself to do something in a controlled or habitual way. And actually, I think it's this last usage that I particularly like, and which I think gives us the purest essence of what it means to do discipline across the board. Someone can give you rules or punishments as a way to guide you towards becoming disciplined, but ultimately, it is up to you and your actions, your follow-through to achieve the state of being disciplined. Do you choose to sleep in or not? Do you go ahead and get that eighth glass of water or cave and get a soda? Do you set aside time to read that book your master told you to read? Or do you binge something on Netflix? The power to achieve discipline comes from within yourself, not from your partner alone. They can encourage us, motivate us, and help us track our progress, but ultimately we decide how disciplined we want to be. We train ourselves as much as our partners train us. And I don't know, there's just something that's like very encouraging about all this to me, just knowing how much power we have over ourselves. And it also means that we don't have to have a partner or even a DS relationship to enjoy doing discipline. Discipline based solo BDSM can be a thing. And I do want to take a pause here for a moment because I want to recognize that there is an aspect of this that can potentially be ableist and it may also be a more like neurotypical way of thinking. I am not really sure how all of this sits with people that are maybe more neurospicy than I am or have different flavors of neurospiciness than I do. I think especially for folk who come into power exchange from a place of feeling really disempowered in life in general, having low self-esteem, low self self-efficacy. They just think, I need to hand over my life to someone else so they can fix it. This is saying, in a way, actually, it's you who fixes yourself. Your partner maybe puts out, like, the lights on the runway, but you're ultimately flying the plane. You know, they tell you where to go. They put in the coordinates, but you're the one who's actually doing the flying on your own. And it's not that you have to be, like, very rigid and, like, you have to be able to achieve certain things. Like, discipline can look many, many different ways depending on what your goals are. It's just about, like, almost counteracting that narrative of what a lot of people have about submission, which is, if I am submissive, I am this weak-willed little, like, wormy guy, and I can't really do anything on my own, and someone has to help me do everything, and, like, not in, like, a fun, like, caregiver little way, but in a, like, I just have to completely give up on myself and please somebody take this away from me and do it for me. I just don't feel like that attitude is particularly healthy or conducive to being a good partner in BDSM. Like, if your approach to kink and a power exchange is like, my life is so messed up and I can't do anything on my own that I have to give it to somebody else, like, that's not gonna really result in positive outcomes. I've talked about that in videos before, though, so I don't want to dwell on it too much here. I really just wanted to pause and acknowledge more the aspect of this that is like, yes, it's empowering to know that you can do things on your own, but also, like, what does it really mean to be productive? What does it really mean to have willpower? Like, we take these ideas for granted that, like, laziness is a real concept and that willpower is a real concept. And I'm very explicitly not using those terms in this video for a reason, but they're actually up for much more debate than you might assume they are. I want to read more about that at some point soon, but I haven't yet, so I don't really have a settled opinion about it, but just let's get back to the actual video. So I think really, rather than trying to settle on one definition, it's better to understand all the different ways someone might use discipline as a concept. You can use discipline to give your power exchange relationship structure. You can use discipline to physically correct unwanted behavior. You can use discipline as a tool in a role play scene. You can even use it to correct unwanted habits. Seeing how far-reaching it is in so many different types of kink, 
I think about discipline as being like the salt of the BDSM kinky food pyramid. It's not a fruit. It's not a vegetable or a protein. It's not something that has fiber in it. It's not one of the big things we tend to focus on. It's not a macronutrient of the kink world. But it does give those bigger things more flavor and depth. And that's still an important role to play. But, you know, not everyone likes salt. Not everyone enjoys purely salty things. Some people have a sweet tooth. And I guess in this BDSM kinky food pyramid I've created, bratting would be like sugar. And y'all know... That while I am not a brat myself, disclaimer, I am not a brat, I spend a lot of time here on my channel defending brats. They, for some reason, get a lot of hate online, and in real life too. People will, without even thinking about it, say things like, I don't want a brat, I want a good submissive, without even considering the implications of what someone might take away when they say that. And I am not about normative statements like that in my videos. I think instead, what people could say is, I want a submissive who wants to achieve the state of being disciplined. Though I have often described brats as being people who like to test the boundaries of their relationship to ensure those boundaries can and will be enforced, I think we can also think about brats from a discipline lens too. From this angle, I might say that a brat is someone who enjoys the process of being disciplined without wanting to fully become disciplined as an absolute state. Bratting and discipline are not opposites. Bratting needs discipline to exist, to be what it is, just like sugar and salt enhance each other. This gives yet another example of how discipline is subtly infused into so many of the things we do in kink, maybe without most of us even realizing it. So next, I want to talk about the biggest overlap that exists within discipline. And that would be the overlap with power exchange. The stereotypical image of power exchange is full of discipline. It basically is discipline. It's contracts, rules about forms of address, and eye gaze, and of course, punishments. It often blows people's minds when I suggest that you can disentangle power exchange from discipline. If you don't like contracts, or the formality of rules, or how strict they are, you don't have to have that. At the end of the day, power exchange is about someone being the follower and the other person being the leader. And of course, if you're a switch, you can also switch between those two roles with your partner. How much overt force or training it takes to get to that place varies based on the individual. It's all optional. Many people find that they get weighed down by trying to remember so many different protocol and things like that, and they don't like the rigidity of it. They like having a more naturalistic approach, and that ultimately serves them better in the long run. On the flip side, though, you may find that what you enjoy about DS isn't the power exchange. It's the discipline. And that can cause a lot of people to get in relationships that are not suited for them when they don't realize that. You know how we sometimes joke that there are people in the community who just get super hot when they write up a contract? Or that there are people who seem to care more about planning out what punishments they would be doing than actually doing them? Yeah, there's a little bit of truth to things like that. There are some people who use being dominant as a pretext for discipline as much as some use discipline as a way to fuel their dominance. And if that's you, what do you do? Well, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do anything about it. It's not like it's a problem that needs to be solved, but it can help inform you about what to ask for during negotiations and what you're looking for in a partner. Do you like being the one who's in charge and leading the team? Or are you more into being the one who creates guidelines for expected behavior and likes to be the enforcer when those expectations aren't followed? 
or do you want to do both? Because it doesn't have to be an either or thing. There's a reason why there has always been so much overlap between these two things. And the same is also true for submissives, maybe even more so. I've seen a lot of subs try to shove themselves into the disciplined box in ways that simply do not suit them because they think that is what being a submissive is. Do you like being a follower who puts trust in their partner to make decisions? Or do you like being molded over time and given lots of clear structure to follow? Now, punishments are another sticky topic here because being in a certain kinds of discipline doesn't mean that corporal punishment is right for you, even though many definitions of discipline include talking about punishment. You can enjoy being trained and given expectations without needing or benefiting from physical discipline. Even though punishments and discipline go together, it's best to have a very broad look at what punishment can mean, at least outside of the usual psychological usage you may be familiar with from entry-level 101 psych classes. You don't have to give someone a spanking to punish them, something I've talked about at length in numerous other videos. Punishment might instead look like having to write lines or type up an apology letter or literally lick boots. I would suggest a better definition might say something like, discipline is the act of correcting someone else for their transgressions or failures. That can look like that stereotypical Victorian schoolhouse whipping can also be the much more modern, physical, pain-free, son, I'm just so disappointed in you right now talking to. And trust me, to the right bottom or submissive, this latter option is just as, if not more motivating than getting a spanking or a whipping. And now, finally, I want to go back to the classic pairing with discipline all the way back from the B&D days, since the very beginning of all of this. And that would be bondage. These days, though, it's very interesting. Bondage has evolved quite a lot, and it's done quite differently than what it was like half a century ago. The most visible form of it within the community is often shibari, which is a very particular style of rope bondage. People often comment they love the artistry of it, the performance of it, or they love being able to overcome a really deep physical challenge while in rope. It's become something more akin to challenging yoga poses or maybe rock climbing, something like that, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I think kind of the new age spirituality, especially like in Europe, their version of rope is really interesting, but it is different. In the mid-20th century, the motivations for bondage here in the States were not as they are today. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that it most commonly existed back in the day in drawings created for male pleasure, rather than being something people often did and that you could go out and see being done. Back then, bondage was often shown as being a tool for punishment. I'm going to leave you tied up alone to teach you a lesson was one fairly common theme. Another, using a lesser talked about form of discipline, was its use in creating controlled bodies. Think things like really tall, single-soled heels or hobble skirts or corsets. Rather than it being about mental discipline and controlling your mind towards a certain path you want to go down, it was about physical discipline as well. I imagine maybe a couple of world wars had a thing or two to do with this. Using bondage as a tool for pain, yes, but also for bodily training, achieving idealized feminine or masculine shapes. Understanding this makes the connection between discipline and bondage clear, even if it's not as popular today. And sort of as an aside here, because I mentioned it, I also want to talk about 
the more historical version of the motivations for Shibari, because in the West, it is definitely much more seen as a performance art or as a tool for overcoming something or for like mental well being. I guess like very yoga y in a lot of ways. But back in the day, when what we would now know as modern Shibari was first being formed over in Japan, and even still in Japan very much to this day, the motivations for Shibari and like what the mental context of it was for the bottom was much more about like revealing hidden things that shouldn't be on display. The sense of like humiliation and embarrassment because, you know, oh, you're like being exposed this way and it's like very shameful. And like that is like almost entirely gone from like most Western people who do bondage. The motivation is not humiliation, like basically ever, at least as far as I can tell. And it's just really interestingly how much things can evolve. And I almost kind of wonder in some ways, even within like humiliation and emotional masochism, there is a sense of discipline in there as well, because discipline is about enforcing norms and structure. And by violating a social norm, that provokes humiliation and feelings of embarrassment, right? If it is against decorum to have your kimono fully open in a certain way or to have certain genitals be revealed, you know, it's kind of you're violating the discipline that you were supposed to be having. You are violating those social norms and that generates tension. So anyways, I'm not an expert about like Japanese sociology or shibari by any means whatsoever, but it's just like interesting food for thought. Like again, how much discipline underlies so much of what we do in BDSM. And my motivation for wanting to talk about this today is I really hope it can help you all understand more what you were looking for in a scene or in a relationship. So by talking about it, maybe you can kind of pick up on some through lines of, well, what I really enjoy about a scene is being given a task or a way to do something and then executing it excellently and like achieving success. And I think honestly, this maybe even goes back to stuff I've talked about a way long time ago about things like service and doing service to the letter versus anticipatory service, right? And maybe discipline is one way we can think about that too, because with service that is anticipatory and you were thinking about your partner's needs ahead of time without being asked or told what to do or following a structure for how that is done necessarily, that's kind of like discipline-free service or maybe discipline light service where it's not really about following a protocol. It's about what can I do to help my partner? I think that's like much more power exchangey flavored. Whereas if you are much more into like disciplined service, that is like when I come to the door, you will, you know, come to see me and you will sit on the floor with your legs crossed, and you'll untie my shoes and do this. Now, like it's very ordered, very structured. And they never ever want someone, well, maybe not ever, but like generally speaking, the rule is don't do something unless I tell you to do it. Do not help me unless I want you to do it. And that's where the discipline comes in is sometimes fighting that urge to help because you haven't been told to help. And that's really hard sometimes. But yeah, it just really permeates so many different things. So maybe just have a moment, reflect on what your motivations are for your kinks. Maybe see how much discipline is there or not. Or maybe it's about opposing discipline and being overcome and compelled into acting in a disciplined way, at least for maybe a short period of time. Because bratting is also out there all over the place. Anyways, I just, I really didn't know where this video was going to go when I started to write it and then suddenly ended up being about like discipline comes from within yourself and like I think it's interesting because I've taken so many different classes about like everything from the basics of BDSM to power exchange. I feel like people really struggle to be able to separate discipline as its own thing apart from DS or sadomasochism or even punishment. And a lot of people see them as very synonymous. Like a lot of people will just say like discipline is punishment, which clearly I do not agree because I love discipline, but I do not love physical punishment. But anyways, that is what I wanted to talk about today, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this. I am trying to make experimenting making some like shorter, quicker topic videos. I know I have really been getting away on the uh, 
the long topics recently, and I would like to try and maybe mix in some more like lighter, quicker topics for y'all every once in a while. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know you think in a comment down below. Did you enjoy this? Do you want to see more like quicker, more bite-sized topics for me? If so, let me know what you want to see in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this and are ready, please do subscribe because I do videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best way you can do it is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.